Today we're looking at Settlement Survival, a city builder game set in the medieval period. I have played this game a ton over the last few days and it's been incredibly fun. And I just want to say I'm in no way sponsored by this game. I'm just really enjoying it and wanted to make some videos. If you'd like to see more content on this, I've done over seven hours of live streams on this. They are on my channel right now. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials and things like that, please do like and subscribe as the more people that do that, the more videos I will make on this game. But for now, let's jump into how to get off to the best possible start in this game. So first up, we of course want to go ahead and hit new game to get ourselves started. At this point you have a ton of different options and I'm going to go through just a few important ones. The most important decision right now is what mode you're going to play and you see we have three modes here. So this is story mode and in the bottom right it tells you some information on it but basically you start on this Easter Island where trees are a bit more difficult to get making wood production a bit slower. So this does make things a little bit harder but if you complete the scenario then you will get to unlock the Easter Island statue to use in other worlds. I believe there are more story modes coming but this game is still relatively new. You can also do a sandbox mode if you wish. So in sandbox mode, you start with all technologies unlocked and you can build structures without any building materials needed. As such, this is basically just building a town that you enjoy without the challenge of getting all the resources and things like that. But we're going to look at standard mode today as I believe that's what most of us will do. So in standard mode, we of course have the challenge of getting the resources and keeping citizens alive and obviously building the town in the normal way. Then we just need to have a good town name <laughs> and there's no harm in putting special structures set to on. Now for difficulty, again, this is up to you, which you can do normal for today's video. And I'm going to keep everything else default apart from I'm going to put the map size up to large, but again, this is up to you. As for seeds, you can go ahead and choose the Easter Island map if you want, or just do a random map and you can randomize it using the dice, or you can enter in your own seed. And if you do some Googling, you can find some cool seeds if that's what you'd like to do. Now I'm going to keep everything else here normal, but again, you guys go ahead and do whatever you like for your style of gameplay, but let's go ahead, start the game, and then we'll get into the real tips to get started. So the first decision we have to make is decide where we want to put our town by dragging the cursor around. And when we left click, that will place down the town. In the top left, you get a description of the different icons that are showing up here on the map, these little green icons that we get. Now, these are all really useful, but early game, some are a bit more useful than others. So the early game ones I like to look out for is this one right here, which is the fish, because it is going to double our fish output, which is really useful for food early game. I also like this one here, which is the seed, because when our gatherers go here, they're guaranteed to get a seed that we can then farm. And again, farming is super important early on. Now, these two over here are the same icon. This is the fertile soil, and this is possibly the best one early game because it increases the output from fields by 50%. So our early game farming is going to be hugely improved by using this. And a final one to look out for, we've got three on screen right now, is the animals one, because when hunters are hunting here, they are guaranteed to get a cub. This cub can then be kept in a pasture and we can get all of the resources from that particular animal, depending on which one it is. Again, that is super useful throughout the game. Incidentally, if you press O, you'll bring up the help menu right here. And if you click here at the resource point, you can go through and see what all these different icons do. So later on in the game, if you need to know what any of these icons do, then this is the place to come. Some other things to bear in mind though for your starting point of your town, I recommend that you are at least somewhere near water as water is going to be useful for a few things in this game. You also want to be near like rocks and trees and they're pretty much everywhere in the game but it's just not a bad thing to be near them. And being near a mountain can be useful for when you get into mining later on. Now later on in the game you can unlock research to actually flatten these mountains because you'll see you're not able to build on them so if you want to do some terraforming that is possible later on in the game. But being near them early game is not a bad idea. So obviously you have to make a decision based on your map and your icons and everyone is going to get something a little bit different. So for me right here, I think having my town somewhere here is going to be really good as we've got three icons that we're getting in the circle, which is actually really, really good. And these icons are all pretty useful early game. We're going to have the extra fish. We're going to have the seeds, which is going to be better for farming. And we have the better grass, which is more of a sort of late early to early mid games thing that we get into when you're herding animals. But still, that's going to be useful. So having a town near here is not a bad thing. So I'm going to go ahead and place my town down right here and let's get started. OK, so up here, we can just go ahead and pause the game and we can see that we now have our town right here and our settlers have moved in. So along the top here, we have our town's happiness and health, which starts off really high. So that's very good. If we hover over this, we get an overview of how our town's going in terms of all the different facets of town life. And then over here, it shows us the amount of adults and kids we have and students, which obviously we'll get on to later. Then here we have our laborers, and this is all the people that are going to help us to do some tasks. So the first thing to do is click on this pickaxe down here, then click gather all. And now you just left click and drag and drop an area around your town. This means that your citizens will start to go and clear all these resources, gather them up and put them in your town storage. Now make sure not to select anything across the river right now because they can't get across there until we build bridges, which we won't do until later on in the game. So what I'm going to do is select an area just like this. But you'll see here we've got all of this stone that's just pretty close by, but just outside. So I want to select all of that as well as stone is a really useful early game resource. We also have a bit more stone up here and this stuff right here, this blacker looking stone, this is iron. Again, that's pretty useful early on. So with all of that selected, we can go ahead and start the game up. And if we want to speed things up to 10 times, then we'll see this happening a bit faster. 
faster. And so here goes all of our laborers. They're off. They're going to chop down these resources, chop down the trees, cut down the rocks, whatever, and bring all the stuff back to our town center. Now, whilst all of that is taking place, I like to go ahead, select the road hotkey, and just start with a dirt road, which speeds up the citizen's movement speed by 25%. This is going to be incredibly useful throughout the entire game. So what I like to do is just start by placing a road around my town center area. Now, this will be a personal preference thing, but I like to start building out a bit of a grid pattern early on, and I recommend that you guys do the same. So what I do is I go around my market like this, and then I'm just going to build some roads off down this way from this side and this way over here like this. The next thing I recommend is you go into your housing and place down an interim housing. This will house immigrants when they join your town to keep their happiness a bit higher and to keep them warm and safe and all that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place mine right here, just like this. And the reason I've done this is when I go to roads, I can still get a road this side of this building to get the grid pattern going on, but we can still have the road coming down like this uh, right next to it. And we can get the grid pattern going off like this to continue onwards. The next thing I like to do is go down to these services and place down a town hall. And we're going to place that one just there like that. That means that this road here that we've got can continue right across the front of the market and we can have the road going off this way like this just to get things moving in the early game, but to have a bit of a plan for our city because this will help us later on. Now, then I want to go ahead and pause this building right here, the interim housing. The town hall can also be paused. And in the top right up here, you can see a timeline and you'll see a little icon, which I'll show you later on in this video that will show you when immigrants are arriving. So you want the town hall and the interim housing built before then, but it's not our first priority. Our first priority would be to build some houses. So I'm going to continue the road up like this and then select houses down here and build in a few houses. And we can scroll in to get a bit of a closer view of the mouse wheel. And if we hold the mouse wheel down, we can rotate around like this to see where we're placing things. So I'm going to go ahead and place down a couple houses here like this. Press R to rotate and then place down another few houses like this. So each house can hold four people. So if we build the five houses right here, that's only 20 people, but we have 28. So we want to make sure we've got seven houses that are being built in the early game here. It's a good idea to keep your houses reasonably central at the start of this game. There will be a lot of demolishing and moving things later on, and we understand and we know that, but for now, it's just good to have things that are close by to get the best benefit for your citizens. And the next thing to do is go into agriculture and build yourself down a field. You start with one seed, so that's what you're going to make, and a standard field is a good way to get started. So let's just go ahead and place that down somewhere near the town. We'll just go in behind here. Now, of course, if we did have the fertile soil, we'd place it in that area, but we don't have that for this playthrough. Now, once you built your field, you need to left click it, go over to here and choose what you're going to produce, which in this case will be pumpkins. Now, because it's January, you'll see that we get this message that says the plant doesn't grow in this season. And we have two people working in here and our number of laborers has dropped from 17 down to 15. However, when you have a situation where a farm isn't growing, it's out of season, or if a farm or building has reached its max output, which we'll talk about a bit later on, then the workers will automatically be laborers. They will not show up here in the numbers, but they are laboring. Well, we got a new crop seed, guys. That just showed up. Uh, so let's see what we actually got. If we select here and we go to products, there we go, staple food, we found some oats. So that's because we were doing a gather all in an area that had that seed icon that was just over here that I showed you at the start of this video. And that's why that is super useful because we already now have two types of food that we can get on with making. And food is obviously super important for growing your town and keeping your citizens alive and happy and all that good stuff. Now the farms open in March. So as you can see, we're ahead of time. We're, we're in good shape here. And what I'm going to do is actually place down a second farm as we found the second seed. And I'll connect a road up to this one as well. Now this right here needs to clear these trees and then that farm will be built. I'm going to speed that up to 10 times to get that happening. And here we go. We got an event notification there that March had arrived. So that's just letting us know that we can now start farming. Okay, this land has now been cleared. So we can go ahead and select this to produce something else. And we actually found some agave as well. So we're doing really well early game here. We're getting a bit of luck. Uh, don't normally find crops this many this early, but that's still good. The agave is mainly used in the brewery and things like that rather than being eaten. You see that the oats can also be used in the brewery, but they can also be eaten. But as we're not getting into the brewery stuff right yet, I think I'm actually going to do a second pumpkin field here and just maximize the amount of pumpkin we get so that our food, which shows up over here, is going to go up nicely. Now, as well as food, they're also going to need water. You see their beverages is the second one down. So under resources right here, we want to go ahead and build a big well and put that somewhere central. So around here will do. Now, the builders at this point only have the well and these buildings here to get on with. So I'm actually going to go ahead and resume these buildings right here. But on the well, I'm going to click this button here to prioritize it. That means that our builders will build the well first, which is what we want, because we're still not at a stage where we desperately need these two buildings here to be built. Now, our well has been built, but you have to go ahead and click on the well and make sure you select that it is producing water. So it won't do that automatically. It will assign workers, but until you select water, nothing will be produced. Now this right here is your early game storage that you actually start with in the game. And as you can see, it's already 77% full. As such, it's a really good idea to get some storage built early game. So you can go to logistics right here and click storage yard. This is something you can then drag and drop. It'll tell you if you're making it like too big or too small, but you can basically make a nice storage yard then for your items to be stored in. So I'm just going to make two here 
here to fill up this whole area like this and then make sure we got road access to this so that the storage can be gotten to and from very quickly to speed up our production. Now, as you can see, the gathering has gone really well with the laborers. We've got gathering all this materials in this area. Everything has been cut down pretty quickly and our resources have been increasing steadily as a result. Now, if we press T, it will open up this right here, which is your technology tree and you start with five technology points. Now, there are a whole number of different ways that you can go with this, but I want to talk to you about a few that I think are really useful in the early game. The first is the tent right here because this can house a three person family, but more importantly, it can be built far away from the marketplace. So if I try to build a house, you see we have this area of radius centered on the marketplace and we're not able to build any houses outside of this. However, if we unlock a tent, then we will be able to do so. Now, why this is useful is because the next thing I recommend you do is to build yourself a hunter cabin. Under resources right here, a hunter's hut, we're going to go ahead and build this. Now, we want it to be near animals and you see here with the hunter's cabin, they actually highlight the animals in orange just like this. Now, be careful because also highlighted in orange right now is all the stuff I've told my people to gather. So this is not, of course, animals. This is rocks and trees. But the animals do move around a bit so you can kind of see them. Now, as I say, the animals are going to move. So we've got like some animals here, some animals here, some animals here. So I reckon if we build our hunter's hut about there, then we're in the middle of all these animals. If they move, we're still going to be reasonably close to them. Now, this is really far away from the town and I do recommend you build a road out towards it because it will just speed up things so, so much. Obviously, roads are useful in general, but when you're going this kind of distance, that extra 25% speed is really going to add up. Now, if we go back to our tech tree and we go ahead and unlock the tent, then under houses, we can build a tent over here and these hunters then will stay a bit warmer and be a bit happier, especially during the winter period. Now, the tent can have three people living in it and the hunter's cabin could also have three people living in it. So by no coincidence, we can have three hunters in a tent. This is also going to work for the gatherer's hut, which is the next thing I recommend you guys build. Again, everything shows up in orange here. So we want to put this down really like in the middle of any sort of resources showing up in orange. So maybe like here, we've got just a ton around us. And we can go ahead and connect up some road to the road we just built there and maybe some road across here as well, just to speed things up a little bit. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and place down a tent just outside this cabin. So the uh, basically the gatherers, the three of them, if we have that many can live in here. OK, let's speed things up and get things built. But that's the basic process for how we're going to get this thing started. Instantly, it's a good idea to prioritize the hunter's hut and the gatherer's hut. Food is really, really important, as is gathering in general. And we're going to prioritize the tents for them as well. So that when we get to winter, they've got somewhere to live and they're not going to freeze and hopefully not die. Now, you'll see this ship icon right here. That means a merchant ship is on the way. I've played this game through several times and I've never been worried about the first couple of ships. I usually worry about building a dock later. This is in technology and trade. You see dock right here. You can unlock a dock, build it on the water, and then ships will stop there and trade with you. Generally speaking, early on in the game, you don't really have enough stuff to really trade and do much with. So it's not something I particularly worry about. Now, going back into the tech tree, I want to talk about some other things that I recommend early game. Delivery is really useful. It says here that the marketplaces have a home delivery service to automatically deliver all the resources, basically, that citizens need to them. That means the citizens don't have to get it themselves. They can spend more time working and productivity is increased. So I always like to activate this one early on. Another two that I think are really useful are these right here. So first of all, material recycling, because then anytime you demolish a building, you get all of the materials back from it. And as you progress through the game, you're going to need this and it's going to be really useful to save all the resources. However, the main reason I like this one is because once we've unlocked that, we can unlock this right here. And it says there that the builders improve techniques and they're basically the construction actions required are down 75%. So that is huge. So to build your town quickly and efficiently early on, I like to go ahead and activate the recycling and activate the faster building. And this means our builders are now going to get through building all this stuff in no time. Now, early on, I always like to have a few different hunters huts. So what I'm going to do is build a road going across here just like this. And we've got animals here and animals here. So I'm going to go ahead and get my hunters hut and just chuck it at the end of this road right here. Now, if you find you need some more builders, what you can do is go to the builder's cabin over here and you start with this in the game. So it doesn't cost you any resources, but it does start with three positions close. We can go ahead and open these up and click the plus button to add in three extra builders. So we've just doubled the amount of builders we've got. Of course, that reduces the amount of laborers. However, at this point, we've got a good amount of resources over here and we're ready to do that and getting things built is going to be more important. So the extra builders and the research we've done, we should now see the building going really, really fast. Incidentally, you can see on the farms here now, it's now harvesting. So basically these all fill up with pumpkin and then once they're full, they start to harvest and they start to take the pumpkins away. So let's go ahead and speed that up. And here you go. Now you can see these pumpkins are being harvested and it tells you how much you've produced each year. So you can see there the amount of pumpkin that you are producing. And of course, that just goes into your food and it's going to be very helpful for your town. Now, incidentally, building the hunters near animals is definitely a good practice, but they will just go and search around for animals anyway. So although you will need to move them from time to time as the animals start to dry up in the area, they do last for quite a long time before they need to be rebuilt somewhere else. At the start of the game, I highly recommend you have two hunters hut and one gatherers hut. Even if you don't have three in each of the hunters hut, at least you're in different areas and you've got more chance of finding different animals and obviously then keeping those animals that you can then use later.
later on to breed. There we go, we got a new tech point acquired. So that comes up and tells us every time we get a tech point, we're now at three tech points. Now, if you really enjoy the technology stuff and you want to unlock a lot of it, then what I recommend you do is go down to education and unlock the research institute. You can then build a research institute and you'll get more tech experience. Uh, as you can see over here, these technology points sort of add up. So the more institutes you got, the more this will add up. This can be really useful if you want to get a lot more technology done early on in the game. Now, my health is starting to drop here and this has happened every time I play, so it'll probably happen to you as well. Now, the easiest fix to this is to go ahead and open up the tech tree and under soap right here, go ahead and activate that. Now, as your hunters start to find animals, they'll get fat from those animals and this fat can be processed and made into soap. So down here under processing, you have the soap workshop. So we can go ahead and place the soap workshop and I'm gonna put it near one of the hunter's cabins just here, because obviously that's got the uh, materials that it's gonna use to make the soap. Now we don't need to make that a priority to be built because the hunters need to get started with collecting the animals and getting the fat from them before we have anything to actually process at the soap workshop. As you can see, by the way, our storage is really filling up here. So this is why we wanted to make the extra because already it's starting to fill up and we're probably gonna need to make even more storage again soon okay so we got a hunter's hut over here at the moment there's one person in there and we do have a good amount of food so keeping just the one might be a good idea for now having all these laborers to actually go around and collect all the resources is really useful early game and even actually later on into the game it's still very useful it's surprising how far you can get with certain resources before you need to actually set up your own systems for them if you've got the right amount of laborers that are collecting resources for you now it's a good idea once you've got the area around your town reasonably cleared is to go and select the gather plant button and just gather plants that are like within any sort of distance of your town that is not too far away because these plants are going to be useful for food but also for medicine so it's going to help with two different things the medicine and the food and obviously that's the health of your citizens and the reason that is so important is to make sure they're not dying off and you're keeping your population because the more people you've got the more workers you've got and the more productive you will be so the next thing you definitely want to build if you've got a fish icon like we have is to go into agriculture and build a fishing dock incidentally this is still useful if you don't have the fishing thing right here but if you do have it it's just that much better for getting you that early game food so then you just need to find a location you can place it down onto the water somewhere nearby so i'm going to place it right there so it's literally right on top of those fish and that'll do really nicely for us and then just connect it up with a bit of road here okay so our soap workshop is now ready and we have someone in here and we can choose to make soap so let's go ahead and select that incidentally you'll see that there's different things you can make here and it shows you the different materials here that it will process so if you for example later on in the game you're like i don't actually want to use my beeswax for this you can just uncheck that recipe if you wish at this stage, it doesn't matter for us, we're going to go ahead and select that. Now down here, we have the max output and every process building will have a maximum output and you can select what that is. Now at the moment, this building doesn't have the raw materials because the hunters haven't yet collected enough of the animal fat for it to be processed into soap. But you needn't worry because Iris, although she is technically showing up as working here, she is actually a laborer. As I said before, if any buildings are not producing, then the workers in them will automatically be converted into laborers and get on with any laboring you've asked your workers to do. Now what I've done obviously is cleared a reasonable sized area here around my town and there's still a bit more that we're clearing out over here however what i've got here is a nice area of stuff we can clear we've got rocks we've got trees we've got plants and things like that that we can take down but none of this is too far away from the overall town center area so what i like to do is save this for the winter months and let's like that we've hit winter there we go october's coming in so as we get to winter here we want them to be gathering reasonably close as i say so we're going to go ahead and hit the gather all button and just set let these resources here that are still reasonably close to the town that way we can still be productive through these winter months but hopefully without the risk of anyone dying. Now, the resources that show up over here, you can just click on them and get more detailed information if you wish. Basically, when they're shown in this dark color, this sort of black color, they are okay. So you don't have too many of them, but you don't also have like not enough of them. If they show in green, then you have a bit of a surplus and you're doing very well in a particular resource. And if they show in red, then you're running a bit low and should probably work on getting more of that resource. Now, you'll see here that citizens will get injured and when they get injured, it's ideal if you have a clinic. So under services, we are gonna go ahead and build a clinic and this will actually improve the health and happiness of anyone living within its radius. So I want this nice and central, so just in there seems like a good spot. And again, I'll just connect up a little bit of road to that. This is especially important to do before you get any immigrants arriving, as every time immigrants join your town, there is a risk that they bring the plague with them. So in that instance, you definitely want to have a clinic to deal with it as best as you can. Obviously, it's still going to inhibit you and have a bit of a negative impact, but at least if you have the clinic, it won't be as bad. Now, instead, I said about the fields here and how like during the winter they're closed down. So if we go ahead and click this button, 
here, it will show you where these workers are. You can see, for example, Arabella is over here. She's chopping down these trees. But basically, here's the field. Here's Arabella. If I click, where is she? She's over here. She's gathering trees. So that is proof that they are actually working as laborers and you don't need to worry about like closing the fields every winter or something like that. So our clinic has been built and automatically we get someone who comes in here and will be working at the clinic. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause right here. We've just hit January year two. So we've basically played this game for a year now. And as you can see, all of our important resources are now in the green, especially food and water and medicine. Those are the three that are really useful, especially in the early game. Now from here, I would go on and my next focus would be on these three, the fuel, the clothing and the tools. Mostly because in the red, but also they are useful things like the more tools we have, the more efficient and productive we are as a town. The better clothing, people are freezing less and having fuel is the same thing. But today's video is just focusing on the very start of this game and in an effort to keep it short and focused on the start of this game, that's what I wanted to go through. If you'd like to see how I develop a town in much more detail, I do have a five hour stream on my channel and that was done recently. I'll put a link to that in the description. You can check that out if you wish. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, then please do like and subscribe. And if I get a lot of people doing that, then I'll definitely make more videos and we'll develop this town right here on further. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.